protection. Right. Right, Mr. Bachelor. Okay. Uh, we're from the engineering club here at Shabo, and we want like try to know you a little bit, little bit better because we yes. only know you from like classes. Classes, and yeah. Very like formal environment, and it's hard to get to know somebody in that environment. Yeah, it's true. So uh, our first question is, what inspired you to go into the math and to the career for for the career? Yeah, what inspired me to uh, choose? There are two things here. Teaching and mathematics. Only that, that? Well, I mean, those are the two aspects of the question, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but what kind of like, knowledge or what, what inspired you? Like something like uh, you work in a classroom studying math and you got this spark. Well, okay. So, um, well, that that takes me back to uh, you know, through a lot of experiences and beginning thoughts. Uh, starting when I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. Now, I could say that even when I was a pretty young kid, I knew that I liked teaching. I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I uh, somehow had this desire to explain things to anybody I could get to listen. <laughs> but why math? Why not physics? Well, that's a good question. That, that didn't happen at first. At first, I had this wonderful romantic relationship to uh, you know, matters of science. Science kind of in general, and then uh, chemistry more particularly. And uh, I had, like when I was, uh, you know, eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, right around that time, uh, you know, a little chem lab I set up, and I had good friends that worked in various laboratories in the Bay Area, and they would supply me with apparatus and chemicals and all kinds of good stuff. And I had a pretty good lab, and then I uh, invited friends over, and we talked about, um, um, you know, chemical processes. And I started a little club called uh, that, that was a science club, you know, inspired by you know kind of things I saw on television or something. So I had a little club going, mm -hmm. and uh, and in that club, I was mostly the one explaining everything. I would explain to my friends, you know, what various chemical processes were needed to, you know, like for example, to make hydrogen gas, you know, a little hydrochloric acid on a, a little pile of zinc, and then we had the hydrogen gas bubbling up, and then we could ignite it and do things like that, and it was it was just, you know, super fun, and there was even uh, uh, an experiment where I uh, I made some sulfuric acid. High concentrated. Yeah, uh, and I and I did things like that. Uh, I entered in a science club. I'm in mean a science fair uh, when I was like in the fifth grade, and I won the grand prize for my chemistry exhibit, and that was inspirational. And so after that, I began teaching uh, one day a week um, in my my grade school. But when I was a, when I started this when I was about in the fifth grade. And I kept teaching one day a week for about, I guess about six years, six or seven years straight. Teaching chemistry. Yeah. Okay. It's just very elementary. I mean, you've got to realize I was teaching the kids that were just a little younger than I was. And, uh, uh, and it was very simple stuff. You know, like, for example, just to see uh, what, how a fermentation reaction worked. You know, I mean, take, take some yeast, put it in some, sh with some sugar. And one of the little experiments we did was just to measure the temperature of the process versus time. And we just, I had the kids every day take a reading and write down the data and the date, you know, keep a nice scientific notebook. And then we made a nice graph of the temperature. And you can see the temperature rise and then fall off very slowly. And it was a beautiful little uh, example of, of scientific work, and the kids loved it, and I did, and that was just one of the things we did. And when I went on to high school, I just kept teaching uh, one day a week at that school, at my original grade school, and that, that was just showing that I really loved teaching anyway. So I, I kind of knew that that's where I was headed. I always liked it. But um, why did I ultimately in the end of the mathematics, say, instead of chemistry or 
physics or something like that. <clears throat> well, that's a very interesting story, I think. I, I think it's a good story. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really happened like this, and uh, all I can say is, when I tell this story, and I've told it before, it seems to, it seems to mean something. This is what it is. Uh, somewhere around when I was in the 10th grade in high school, I had this wonderful lab, as I said before, and I, by that time it was quite expansive. I mean, I had a... I actually had a, a room, can you believe this? A whole room, not in my own house though. Uh, in my father's house, uh, uh, there wasn't enough room in, in the house. It was a big house, but he, had, he was an artist, so he had all kinds of stuff all over the place. And there wasn't enough room for my uh, laboratory. <clears throat> so I asked the next door neighbor if I could use his basement for my lab. And astoundingly, he said yes. <laughs> so I, I set up a lab in this other guy's basement, and it was fabulous for a couple of years. But then those people that lived in that house subsequently had to move away. And so I got evicted out of my lab by the new people that moved in. Obviously, you know, you, you, know, you, can't, you can't rent a house uh, that, and, and say, well, by the way, there's a teenage kid down in your basement that has a chem lab down there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, so uh, I had to leave, and uh, and when I left, I was you know kind of despondent, but you know I, I accepted it. And um, but around that time, some other neighbors moved in near, uh, in another house. And these were college students at a local college, uh, a college called St. Mary's College, which was about you know five or six miles away. And. Uh, and I, I was good friends with those guys. And uh, there, were, there were three, let's see, three, no, there were four guys that lived in this house. They were, they was, they were kind of sharing the, the rent and everything. And, uh, and I told them, you know, I, I got to leave my, my chem lab down there in this other place. Uh, and I was just wondering, uh, you know, what do you think? Do you know of any place where I could set up? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, yes. In fact, let me let us introduce you to a chemistry teacher over at St. Mary's College. So they did. Did this one? I went over there. The, this fabulous brother named Brother Myron, still there, uh, uh, took a, a liking to me for some reason and said, "Yes, come on over here." So I set up over there, and he gave me a couple lockers down in the in, in their big old chemistry lab wonderful experience. I mean, I would go over there after school and, uh, and, and, and you know, experiment. Design an, uh, some kind of experiment, work it out, and then I had the advantage of having uh, excellent uh, professors of chemistry wandering around and I could ask them questions about anything I was doing. And I, 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 I got to do that for a couple of years. Well, one day, I was, you know, one, one month or two actually, I, I had designed this experiment. I was getting interested in, in photosynthesis. And I wanted to figure out how to measure uh, how rapidly a photosynthetic reaction was taking place. You know, and I, I had a very naive, silly, by, in retrospect, idea about it. But, uh, but nevertheless, I wanted to figure out a way to measure the rate of photosynthesis so that I could then tinker with it, uh, you know, and try things and see how that affected the rate at which this plant that I had was, was photosynthesizing, okay? So, so I, I, my first problem was, okay, how do you measure the rate of something like that? And, and naturally, I thought to myself, well, I have to measure the rate at which oxygen is generated by the plant. You know, this is my thinking on it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so then I thought, well, how do I measure the rate at which uh, oxygen gas is generated by the plant. And I thought in my mind, well, something to do 